Tyson Bell. I'm an infectious disease and critical care physician at the University of Virginia. I'm the director of the COVID ICU. It's really important to know who's positive in the community and be able to test in a widespread aggressive fashion so that we can really stop the chain of transmission of the virus. Traditionally, there's a lot of leeway when it comes to federal regulations and hospital laboratories' ability to set up their in-house testing. But the thing about the emergency declaration was that it made the diagnostic innovation more difficult because now it had to go through the FDA. So now all of a sudden, any university laboratory that has the experience and the know-how to set up their own in-house testing now has to clear it in order to make this work. We're not a public health lab. As a clinical lab, we're not part of the system. You know, the CDC and the state public health labs are fantastic, but clinical labs, the like hospital clinical labs, commercial labs, perform 90 to 95% of testing. We really are the front lines of the public health system. And so it's really important that we're part of that conversation as well. So we're trying to figure out, is it better to just deal with the FDA and the backlog there and set up for our own in-house testing or do we just wait for the CDC to fix the issues with the test? We decided initially to wait, and that was the wrong decision. Many labs gave up rather than face the thicket of bureaucratic rules. But Alex Renninger did not give up and instead began to slog through the FDA regulatory process. And so that point, you to really go fully in, you gotta make your own test. So we've got the template, the paperwork, couldn't get the comments back until you mail in the document. And even though you email a document, you had to burn it to a CD or a USB and physically send the document as well. The original process suggested testing 50 positive samples, but in that case in the US, there were 14 known cases. But even getting that one sample, that one positive sample was the hardest part. And obtaining clinical material from the CDC is, is, is very difficult. And I think that was when you realized that the FDA and the CDC maybe hadn't talked a ton. While federal agencies failed to talk to each other, the virus swirled in mid-February through a series of square dances in suburban Seattle. With every dose go the virus changed partners. But without testing, scientists couldn't follow the spread. The emergency steps meant for speed and innovation slowed the process down to a crawl. The White House could have cut through the red tape. The mystery is why those in power didn't force the bureaucracy to find a quick solution. While we were on pause, the anxiety level of our members just increased exponentially day after day. There was just more frustration, concern, um, frankly sadness because we weren't able to do our job. 